The last bit I want to cover in this video is, is how we access things on the web. How do we say, I, I want this thing, <coughs> and I know it lives here, because remember from some of the other videos on computer networks, computers are given these things called IP addresses, which are sets of numbers, almost like a phone number for a computer, and they're all different. But we don't ever remember them. We remember google.com, rappahannock.edu. So there's a translation that goes on behind the scenes that when we say, I want to go to google.com, there are services that, the, that run on top of the internet and the web that know, okay, google.com, they live here at this address. And uh, what we type in is something called a URL. And a URL is built up of a lot of different pieces, possibly, but sometimes they're just very simple. Sometimes it is, I just want to go to google.com, that's all I need to type. And Google, the domain, .com, the top level domain, those are the two pieces I need. In actuality, <coughs> the web browser is is adding the HTTP as colon slash slash the protocol. It's going to add that automatically because web browsers are becoming smarter and smarter and smarter. They're also adding www a server name. Which specific server at Google's data center at their warehouse of servers do you want? Well, if you don't give me one, you probably want this www convention that we've created as the default. So I'll give you that one. Uh, every URL has a protocol. HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol is the default, but we're moving towards using HTTPS, a secure protocol, as the default. There is a server name. We need to access a single computer. Google is a massive company. They have thousands upon thousands of servers. Which one do you want? You need to tell me which server you want to access. This is also called a subdomain because it's usually uh, you know, it's www.google, a subdomain of Google, because everybody's got a www server, everybody's got a web server, which, whose web server do you want? So I want a web server at google.com, this top level domain, we create these hierarchies, it's a, it's a bucket, essentially you've got a huge bucket, .com, and inside the .com bucket there are millions of companies who, who want to be in that .com bucket, that's where they belong. .edu is another one. There's a huge bucket, .edu, top level domain. And there are thousands and thousands of universities and colleges who belong here that are the organizations who want to be in the .edu bucket. Inside the Rappahannock bucket, which is inside the .edu bucket, we've got uh, lots and lots of servers, of subdomains. We've got our www.rappahannock.edu, that subdomain. We've got an app.rappahannock.edu, that's where our online scholarship uh, is, is located currently. Uh, we, so we've got different servers that are available that serve different purposes inside of each of these buckets. We move then to the port, something we don't see quite often. This is usually invisible because there are some defaults. This dot, uh, excuse me, colon 443 is the default port for a secure connection. We don't hardly ever see this unless you're doing uh, some technical work on a, on a configuration for a system is, is usually when you would see the port. Uh, another common one is colon 80. If this is just HTTP, <coughs> that's why I've, I've labeled the, the protocol and the port are both in blue. Not all of these colors uh, coordinate that way, but this uh, these two do kind of interrelate. The protocol and the port are typically uh, it's familiar with each other. There, there's, a, there's a link there. So we might not see a colon 443 port, but we do usually see a folder or a path. Um, usually we, we go to google.com and then um, you know we do some stuff and we go deep down into, you know, there's more than just one page out there, right? Think about our website, the rappahannock.edu website, right? If you click on academics and you want to look at some of our degree programs, there is, um, you know, you're going to hit a folder path. You're going to go, well, okay, we've got rappahannock.edu slash academics slash degrees slash uh, web design. 
right? So we've got a path, and it's a hierarchy. It's just like your computer. There's my C drive. There's my my documents. There's my m music. There's this artist I like, and inside of that, there's this album, and inside of that, there's finally some songs. It's the same concept. Uh, we get to the file name, which the default for uh, you know a web page is .html. So you might see at the end of your URL an index.html or a whatever file you've looked for .html. But you might not and the reason for that is because the web is is more and more dynamic and uh, so sometimes we access files that uh, well they're, they're just di it's dynamic in nature. They, they kind of don't exist but that's getting beyond what, what we need to talk about for this class. You know if you take some of the web design classes we talk about what's really going on behind the scenes there. But sometimes you might go to rapahannock.edu slash academics and you're accessing a web page. It's got to be a file, but I don't see a file name and that's because it's dynamically generated on the fly. Um, and we don't need to create a static HTML file. We just create the file that we need on the, on the fly. And, and the web is becoming more and more that way. So sometimes you'll see a file name which has a .html file extension Maybe you want to access a .pdf file on the web. You go into Blackboard and look at the syllabus for this course, right? You're going to have a Blackboard URL, which is really long, and then at the end of it, it's going to be syllabus.pdf. That's the file I'm accessing. How about these parameters? Uh, Google search is a great example of this. Type in a search into Google, and your google.com URL is going to have this question mark. Uh, I think now they're using Q or S. They, they have a question mark and then a letter equals and then the stuff you typed and there's a bunch of them you know it's something equals something and something equals something so it's like you searched for this equals here's the words you search for and uh, your computer equals a Mac it knows you're on a Mac and your browser equals Safari it knew you were using the Safari web browser and it's got all these different parameters that tells the web page a little bit about you or some information that it needs to know to give you the content it wants. These are called parameters. They're variables and they're how we create these complex uh, web applications nowadays. We need to interact more and more with the server on the other end and we need to tell it stuff. And so one way to do that is to use URL parameters. And then the last bit here is called a named anchor. If you've ever clicked on a, a URL, and we do this some on, on, our, on the Rappahannock website, and you jump down to the middle of the page. And you're like, oh, that was kind of cool. We could do that by using these named anchors. It's kind of like, I want to go to a page, but I also want to go to a specific part of it. Wikipedia does this too. Each of the main headings on Wikipedia is a named anchor. And you can say, take me to the web page on Vint Cerf to the awards section. I want to know what honorary degrees he's gotten. And in the URL, you could put hashtag. Um, you know whatever the name of that location is and you'll get taken to the to the bottom or the middle of the page there so web, web URLs they can be very simple google.com and they can be very complex they can contain all of these pieces uh, and there's a mix and match that we usually end up with but you want to be able to identify which piece is which and, and be able to label them that's it for this video on the internet versus the World Wide Web. Uh, I'm Prof. Mike Green, and thanks for watching.